Today, let us continue the journey of uh, post functions, script runner, post function on cloud. And we have been looking at various post functions that uh, we can use straight away without writing any piece of code. And I quite enjoy this feature because uh, there are so many things that I want to do and I don't really want to spend time writing code. So let us see. Let, let us see what all we can do. So let us add uh, the post function. And by the way, we are looking on. We are we are basically trying to do something when the issue is moved to on hold status. So whenever you move the issue to on hold status, maybe you want to do something like create maybe subtask or uh, uh, maybe you want to do further things. Let us continue what all we can do. So I'll try to add one more post function. And we have looked at so far removing the issue from the sprint. We have looked at uh, assigning the issue, cloning the issue, and also creating a subtask. Let us now take a look at the fast track uh, transition issue. Now let me add a fast track uh, transition issue and then I'll show you how it works. So basically I first need to enter a name. So so just to give you some background, what I want to do, I want to basically uh, move the issue directly to, so if I show you the workflow, so if I move the issue to on hold, instead of instead of staying at on, on on hold status, I want the issue to go to done instead, if there is a certain condition, uh, which is fulfilling. So let us see how it works. So for this example, I will use one, uh, one uh, transition ID, I'll show you first the the post function. So when you add a post function, you have to specify the condition. So maybe you want to do it for a specific issue type. So if the issue type is, uh, let us say bug, only then I want to do it. Um, or maybe in the beginning, um, let us keep this, let us keep this uh, condition. So I just want to do it for bug or maybe some specific issue type, then I need to specify transition comment, like if you want to add uh, a comment, I think it is a good idea. I think it will only work if the transition allows the comment allows commenting but we'll see if it works or not. And we have to specify the transition ID and uh, the transition ID should be the one that you want to execute. For example, if you want to move the issue to, to let's say when you move the issue to on hold, from on hold, you want to basically go to to do, or maybe in progress, for example, or maybe done. So maybe you want to just make the issue or you basically just want to directly make the issue as done. You want to execute this transition. So here you can specify the transition ID, which is 31. You can go back and uh, you can specify 31 here. And uh, transition name is, uh, I believe, not required when you specify the transition ID. So let us keep it like this. And uh, the only thing that we need to be aware of is the this particular post function will only work when the issue type is bug. So let us save the issue, uh, not the issue, but the post function. And uh, let us see how it works. And uh, we'll publish the draft workflow. And I don't really want to save the workflow. And and let us see, let us see how it works. So I'll go to the, I'll go to one of the issue. I'll probably go to the issue that I was working on, maybe, maybe this one. So this is one issue that I was trying to, trying to uh, check, but we have been looking at this particular issue where we were able to create some subtask when you move the issue to on hold. So let us do it again. This time we have a bit more happening than adding more subtasks to the issue. We want to also make the issue go to the done status directly. So I'll, I'll first go back to to do and then I'll execute the on hold transition. Now, right now we have seven subtasks. It will definitely create two more subtasks because those two subtasks are, uh, are defined and uh, are being created by the post function that we added earlier. But we might have one more, uh, one more transition. So let us see if I move the issue to on hold. If I now refresh the issue, and I'll take a look at the. So the first thing that I notice is that the issue is still on hold. So the transition didn't happen. The fast track transition, the post function didn't execute. Maybe there was something wrong, and. Uh, I can see here, I believe there is new, I, I guess there were like seven subtasks and now one has been added. 
let us try it again. Let us try it one more time. So right now we have eight subtasks. I will move the issue to to do and uh, I will now move the issue to on hold one more time and I will uh, refresh the page to see number of subtasks. I was expecting two subtasks to be added but yeah it is adding two subtasks, two additional uh, subtasks um, or three. I think uh, we refresh the uh, issue a bit early uh, last time but we have to wait for maybe you know few seconds. I think the, the subtask, the, the post function to execute, the post function to create a subtask is working but not the other one, the one that we just added for fast tracking and, and I believe uh, there is something wrong. The good thing is that we can always uh, take a look at uh, the execution history to figure out what didn't work, what exactly didn't work. So I guess it is something to do with the condition, maybe the condition was not correct. Um, I guess the bug issue type should have capital B instead of everything in small. Let us see. So it says on top, uh, so there is no error. It means uh, nothing wrong with the with uh, with the uh, post function, but the condition didn't evaluate to true. So I I guess the issue type's name should be starting with capital B. Let us see. Let us see if uh, my assumption is uh, is correct. So I will go to the edit of this uh, post function and I will uh, try to change the condition. I want to basically make sure. So we know that. So one thing is one thing is sure that the conditions are working. But in, in our case, the condition didn't evaluate to true, which we want because it is a bug. So I'll change it to capital B and I will publish the workflow. So we will not save the backup copy because I know my workflow is correct and, I'm, and we are just trying to learn how it works. So let us do it one more time. Before I do it, I'll show you the scenario. We have 11 subtasks. I, I'm expecting 13 and uh, I'm also expecting uh, issue to go to done state. So we are ready and uh, let us click on the on hold and uh, we have to refresh the we have to refresh the uh, issue for the updates to reflect here and after refreshing the issue I can see that we definitely have uh, the we, de we definitely have uh, the uh, subtask post function which worked correctly but not the other one. Oh yeah, I think it worked. So I, I think we just have to wait for like, I think I was a bit impatient. I quickly, I clicked on the refresh button too, too, too quickly, but it worked. So basically what happened is it looked for the issue type, which is definitely bug. And since we have a condition that execute the post function and move it to done when the condition is true, which is true in this case, it is now true and it is now definitely working. The post function is working. The fast track of post function is working. So one possible, I'm sure you can think about uh, the use case of this fast tracking of transition. One example that I can think of is, uh, let us say you, you are looking for, you're seeking approvals, but in case a certain condition is true, you want to move the issue to the next state without without manual, without someone going to the issue and manually clicking on the button. So if let us say you are looking for an approval and if certain certain fields in your issue, uh, they have few values, you can check for those values and if the values are there and if the condition is true while you're, while you're uh, writing the post function, fast track post function, then don't wait for the approval, just move, move to the next, to the next uh, stage or the next status. So I hope you found this video useful and you also learned something new today. Thank you very much. And by the way, do let me know if you are uh, enjoying the 
videos that I'm creating on uh, Scriptno for Jira on cloud. Since the focus is more on cloud, I think it also makes sense for us to explore cloud and different things that we can do on cloud customization. I already have plenty of videos that talk about, not only talk about, but that shows how you can interact with cloud using REST API. And it doesn't really matter if you're doing those automations using a script now for Jira, or maybe you're using any other app, or maybe you're using automation. It is always good to know the possibilities of uh, different things you can do with the REST API on cloud. So do take a look at those videos. I have plenty of videos that talk about uh, doing simple things, but really useful things that you can do with the with the REST API. So that is that is all for today. Thank you very much.